All right, welcome everybody to episode 10 of Adventures in Inbetweening. Today I'm going to go through how I approach my little dragon here, zipping across the screen as if he were able to transform into fire. Now, we have an embarrassment of riches when it comes to video reference these days. It's really simple going onto YouTube and looking at the slow-mo guys, for example, to see what they do with their 10,000, 100,000 frames per second cameras. And in this case, they're hitting a tennis ball on fire, as these guys are apt to do. And it gives us a sense of the shapes of the fire. You can just look at the shape and turn it into a 2D image with edges. Now, obviously, fire doesn't have edges. We're looking at Mickey's Fire Brigade here from 1935. And it's more of a simplistic view of fire, but still, the idea is that they were able to study real fire and look at it and say, okay, how are we going to represent that? Even if it's little pieces of fire dancing around, it's the sharp edges, it's the curves, it's the pieces breaking off. All of these things uh, contribute to making believable fire. Now, by 1959, with Sleeping Beauty here, they had uh, pushed the uh, ability to animate fire further and the, uh, the complexity of the designs. You can see we've got some really nice curves versus the uh, points here. One of the things that distinguishes fire from other effects like water or smoke is the abrupt direction changes. You come to a point and then you reverse that curve. And these types of, uh, these types of designs are really what helps sell and make us feel like, oh yeah, that's, that's, that's how I know about fire. That, that's what I know about fire. That reflects uh, the reality that I see. So when I'm drawing the fire here, first thing I'm drawing is uh, I'm doing a path for the fire to be following. Uh, skewing it down a bit, okay, and then I'm starting the fire. So I'm thinking, but okay, my dragon here is going to turn into fire. So he's going to be leading along that path. Uh, one thing to always keep in mind about fire is fire goes up. So as a general rule, if you want believable fire, things are constantly moving upwards. So you can see that I've got his arms, his head, those little pieces moving up there. I have his face moving down just because I'm thinking of that as being more in control. That's not something that's just being, uh, you know, affected by the uh, physics of the world that this little dinosaur is living in. So I'm drawing the fire as it follows the trail here. Now, as it starts along the trail, so imagine it's like a gunpowder trail or something like that it starts out small and then it gets bigger quickly and you can see when i color it in later that that when fire starts it starts out hot and then it immediately cools as it gets further from the source so i'm uh, working my way into the dragon here now first of all you can see i was flipping 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 but i've only got the red lines on there that means i'm only showing the lines that are the drawings that are happening before i'm, I'm animating straight forward i wasn't animating into anything now that i'm getting close to where the dragon dinosaur is I have to animate into his shape, so I have the green lines on as well. So the green lines are where I'm animating to, red lines are where I'm animating from. So you can see that I'm uh, drawing the dragon as if it were on fire, and it's going to go zoop and uh, form into the final shape, the final design here. And you can see all these pieces breaking off, all fire, again, fire goes up. That is the main point here. So as we're animating along, we want to make sure that everything is going up. Now, there's so much to keep track of here because you can see those parts on the right side there. They're actually moving off to the side as well because that's following through the direction that the dragon went. So it's, it's, it's just so much to track. And this is, that's why this, you know, I'm playing this at 20 times speed. This is very time-consuming work. But it's, it's a matter of coming up with interesting shapes, varied shapes, making sure that I don't have the shape, uh, same shape over and over having some pieces kind of hotter and lasting for longer. And here we go. This is the line art as it is. I'm happy with that. Yeah, that took a little while, but uh, it's all working. Now time to add the color. Now the color here, again, thinking about the hot spots. So the hot spot is yellow. That's the leading uh, track here. And I changed the background to gray for a little bit. I was getting a little bit tired of looking at the white background. So the yellow is the leading edge. Orange is a little bit uh, less hot. It's a couple frames after the uh, leading edge is put, put, put down. And then red is the final color as it gets further and further from the heat source and the fire dissipates into nothingness. So here I'm doing, I uh, did the yellow first. Now I'm going through and I'm doing the oranges. Uh, I've got the fire going into where the dragon is there. Uh, trying a little bit of different colors, doing a fill there. Uh, now I'm going to color the dragon in. So the the dragon has a bit of a... <laughs> it's going from yellow being hot, orange being less hot, red being least hot, 
to the dragon, where now I'm using the orange and yellow and red as tones and as different colors. So there's a, there's a transition period there where it goes from heat to light source. But you can see that all happen. So I'm flipping, flipping, flipping. Now I don't have any onion skinning on. I'm only concerned about the flipping. I'm looking at the red, adding the red in. And here's my final version of it. Here's half speed. Fire going up. Yeah, I'm liking the shape of it. I'm liking the colors. I'm liking the feel. And that's fire. Thanks for checking out episode 10, everybody. Uh, we'll have more effects to come. Please give a thumbs up and subscribe. Get ready for episode 11. Take care.